You didn't know all that was going to happen right before you go on. <laughs> Even though we were just talking a moment ago, I guess I, guess I could have warned you. But what's up, beautiful? It's all good. I'm so I'm so, so happy to be here. <laughs> you, so, listen. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for having this platform for people because it's so necessary. It's so needed. And uh, and we just thank you from the heavens for this because I when I saw that you put this together I was like now that is very clever <laughs> and very uh, <laughs> thank you so much yeah there is a uh, I I am giddy with excitement to have you on the show <laughs> I'm oh. being cool I'm being cool though I'm really <laughs> trying to be cool <laughs> so, because uh, okay you're gonna hear what I didn't tell you in the show prep and all that other stuff so here we go <laughs> I'll touch on this much. Thank you for your kindness and your kind words. This is uh, mostly due to my daughter's, my youngest one. She's 28 going on 29. Her idea to have a show, Dad, you should do this. Uh, it, has, it has got to this point in our second season. We've been on since August of last year. We put on two seasons so forth. But you have so been on my radar. You have no idea. Oh. Have no, I was like, I'm going to get her one day and she's going to be on the show with me. I don't care. I said, if I have to fly to New wherever you are on the East Coast, I'm going, we're going to do a show and I'll do it live right there in her living room if we have to. <laughs> because I, I really want, I want Tracy. I know you're not going to give me anything less and outside of that. Um, this is your first time on Instagram. Yeah, but, uh, it's my first time. To, yeah, yeah I'm, an, this, I'm an Instagram virgin with this stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. All, all we I did, you know, three years ago, I just randomly was like, you know what? I have a lot of information about narcissism. So let me yes, just put out do. a video. And then the next thing I knew, like, people were watching. And then I was like, I'll put some more information out. And then so that kind of became my platform. And um. Instagram, I haven't been using as much, but I'm learning, as I was talking to you earlier, <laughs> yes, I'm yes. learning how to sync things now and make it much yeah. more convenient for, like, people that are just solely Instagrammers or, you know, yeah. uh, there's there's so much to it. And everything changes, as you know. <laughs> Tell me about it. And you are a trooper. Uh, uh, you are a wonderful trooper because we got this going just right before uh, the show. And uh, you were smooth, and uh, as soon as you went live on our practice page, you, your people started to roll in. And I have <laughs> to tell you this, as you're speaking, uh, some of your followers are trying to reach out to me on my other screen that, I, that they're, they're oh wondering if the shows, I'm going to answer them as we, and this is oh, happening okay. in real time. So they That's... wanted to know, are we on right now? And I'm tell, letting them know yes, uh, so uh, that we are live uh, right now. Uh, in my ghetto term, we are live now. So, so, so there you go. All right. So in real time, I'm just answering them so that they know. Uh, they've already tried to reach out to me a few times. Like, is she going to be on there yeah, or here? They, they so. might not know just as much as I do. Like, do I click on her page? Do I click on yeah. his? Like, yeah. That, that's the, essentially uh, what they're asking me right I'm now. Old, yeah. you know? <laughs> hey, you know, hey, be careful now. Stuff. Careful now. You, you don't have a senior citizen card yet, so be careful now. So. <laughs> All right, so look, um, everyone, uh, as I wanted to do, give everybody an opportunity to come in because we are going to have a Friday fun discussion, but a serious one with a lot of uh, stuff in it. Um, how am I saying that? We haven't done it yet because that's where I'm going to drive this. I want you um, to save all the juicy stuff uh, for YouTube, but uh, I want you to really tell me, and this is, I've been waiting to ask you this. Oh, boy. How do you really feel? about narcissists who don't care and don't want to change how do you really feel about narcissists well i think anybody that watches my channel can clearly <laughs> see how i feel about it i wasn't even I mean, going to go there yet but go ahead it is just you know the fact that i i wake up every day still after the last three years that i put that channel together and i every day i wake up like what do we have to do to put an end to this? I call it Operation Evil. I do not subscribe now. I know you've got plenty of people on, on that come on and believe it's, it's psychological. I don't believe that. Yeah. And uh, I believe that it's a choice. And I believe it's a lack of character and integrity. That's my definition of narcissism, a lack of character yeah. and integrity. Because, and, and why I say that so, so uh, matter of fact is because 
I have known people in my lifetime that truly have gone through very abusive situations in their home and have turned out to be just the most amazing, wonderful people. So yeah. we can't sit around and, and have this discussion that the abuse in the house or whatever happened to so-and-so is, is what has caused them to be this way. In my, in my opinion, and just from everything I've seen in my lifetime up into all the clients I'm working with now, which has been such a blessing because they're teaching me and they're giving me research that is giving me the knowledge and information and understanding that I, I believe it comes down to when people are early, they're in early adulthood, they can yeah. make a choice. They can say, I saw mom and dad do this to me. So I'm going to yeah. do it to other people or whoever, you know, did the abuse or I, or, you know, mom and dad did this to me. So therefore I'm never going to be like them. Right. And right. I believe right. it's a choice. It ultimately comes down to choice. And then, I get into the spiritual stuff so much uh -huh. on my channel that right. is really where I, I am looking at it from. And I'll tell you, Paxton, when I was 22 years old, that was my first dealing with a narcissist on an intimate level. Now, okay. I didn't realize that I had dealt with this in childhood from various characters growing up. Um, right. But that was the first person that I remember. I remember dating him and being like, there is something really bizarre about this. Like I can't, I couldn't put my finger on it. And so I started doing all kinds of research. YouTube came about. So this is circa 2004 was my first dealing okay. with a narcissist right. intimately. Okay. And 2006 was when YouTube started. And I wasn't, I want to say it wasn't much long after two, I, I want to say it was 2008 maybe is when uh, I started to see Sam Bachman. Cause I was, this guy was in my life for eight years, uh, in and out of my life the, for eight the, years. Narc the, number one. The narc, the narc number one. Okay. The narc yeah, number the narc one was, was going in and out of your life over this period of time. Yeah. And then, and then essentially Sam Vaknin happened. He, he, yeah. He was the first person I had found any information about this because you know, what's interesting after I started dating him, I went through my psychology book from, from college and I was like, there he, there it is. Cause I knew I had, I knew I had understood the characteristics, but I also in those years uh, that I was with him and because he did such a number on me emotionally, mm -hmm. uh, it was like, I was like, boom, boom, boom. It went from him right straight to the next one. I hadn't even healed from him and he was still in my life. And I was on to narc number two. Narc number two was a full blown sociopath, not knowing wow. any of this. Okay, okay, before you before you talk about that narc number two real quick, I'm just gonna ask. Yeah. Because what has happened with this channel is that more younger people are gravitating to it and are writing me and we're talking. Good. So a lot of them, this is all new to them. You know, like you're saying you found it and they didn't know about it. That's what's now watching this show and are now moving to our, my, our YouTube channel. So this, explain, explain this part for me, my friend. Yeah. What are we talking about between narc number one and narc number two? If you had to say, what's that time frame in between a couple of months, six oh. months, a year? How did oh. you, what was the window between you left that one and went like, phew, and then you oh. stepped into, you stepped into the mud again. See, this one was, this one, we were both. Okay, there's so much to these stories, but I'll try to narrow it down. We were both in bands together. I was in this band in Providence. He had this band in Boston. And our bands had to play together, whether we were getting along or not. This and is NARC number one or two? NARC number one. This is, this is the Got first it. one. Okay. Got it. So, okay. So, so knowing my story is that I, I am a musician. And in those days, you know, I'd had a work from home position. Or um, I was at, for a little while there. Then I, did, I had a position where I was helping people with disabilities find jobs. So literally my, my social time was these shows. I would play like religiously Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, a lot of time out of town. I was okay. surrounded by musicians. So, okay. um, and as you know, they, they don't have the best reputations. And, and, and a how, old, how, old, how old were you? I was 20. So when my band really started to, to do things and tour and really get serious, I was around 21, 22. And this is when Got I it. met NARC number one. Got so it. he was in my life, um, still in my life when I met NARC number two. I mean, we were on again, off again, on again, off again. And, and he was like a Mick Jagger. He had, I, I, you know, 
I thought I was the only one in his life. I really did. I thought it was between like me and one other woman. Come to find out it was between me, her, uh, Sally, Sue, C you know, Cindy. He had, uh, a, he had a tribe of, of women oh, at his disposal. Yeah. So his heart wasn't locked into you at all. No, but he had, but the thing what he, that he did to me was he had me thinking he was so emotionally, he, see, he got me emotionally and a lot uh, of, a lot of them, this is what they're going to do. You know, he knew my, my religious or whatever you want to call it. My spiritual uh, thing was, I did not sleep with people. My, my nickname right. around here was, Hey, just be careful. She doesn't give it out. Like it's candy. <laughs> That was, that was like, hey, that's a that that's like, a really that's a really long nickname to say yeah, that you were you were, you had modesty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You had that's modesty. Mean, the saying people would say about me. So it was like a challenge to him. Oh, uh, okay. You know, I, I said I I wouldn't do that um, unless I knew that there was there was plans to get married. Um. Anyhow, uh, yeah, I wasn't even through that over him and Narc Number Two came on the scenes, looked exactly like Billy Idol. I mean, this wow. guy, everyone knows his nickname, Billy Idol. Oh, wow. And the thing about him, I remember being like, I knew him in the scene. Okay. I knew of him in the scene and I've seen his band. Very talented. Both of them. Very talented musicians. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I remember he had a girlfriend at the time. And anyway, long story short, um, very, very charming, but I remember there was this arrogance to him. I couldn't figure out if he was a goofball or arrogant. I couldn't figure him out because he had was this he really funny sarcastic? Side. Sarcastic too? Oh, kind of? yeah. Like his sense of humor. And when he would drink, you would see a completely different side of him. So he was a drinker. Wow. Okay. Um, and uh, and that was that was my first experience that uh, that, that somebody had an addiction to alcohol and pornography. I had never dealt with that before. Wow. Like now a, this a is, hardcore addiction. This is all new to you. So he had the he ability to be really good at what he did, that is being a musician, but he was horrible when it came to his character and moral values is what you're saying. That part you began to get to know then? You got to see that part? Yeah. Uh, the, this, this addiction to porn? Uh, yes. this this drinking that was a part of his lifestyle yeah. all of that was something that steered you away from him how did he get you in his lair he 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 got me again you know the thing with these men i have to say that i'm looking back now is they knew i had they 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 saw my big heart and they saw okay. a person that you know i was in a field at this time now i'm 26 years old so fast forward i'm in this field helping people with disabilities, find jobs. That was my job for, for I was a vocational coordinator, um, vocational uh, coach for, uh, you know, almost going on to 14 years. Cause I, I brought that program on to another I was doing. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they knew I had this heart and this willingness to want help. And look, I'm 26 years old. I don't even understand what I'm dealing no. with here. No, no, not even I, close. Yeah, I, I, I had no, you know, I, I, I knew that he was disturbed. He shared some things with me that were quite disturbing of things that he, he you know, uh, things that he thought in his head, uh, things that yeah. happened to him in childhood uh, that I remember I had a holistic therapist at the time. I had a lot of therapists during these days. <laughs> so I always tell people, hey, before you go see a therapist, you know, it's that saying, look around at who's in your life. You know, maybe they're the, they're the ones that have to go before you go, you go start getting therapy. But I remember um, I had, was telling her some of these things and she didn't have a clue either. Okay. A lot of these therapists, they don't understand narcissism. And You'll bring them in. I, I brought him in to some of the sessions with me. Really? Wow. Yep. And I remember, though, one thing she did say to me that stuck was she said, Tracy, there's nothing here. Wow. There's, no, there's, no, there's nothing behind those eyes. And That's not, uh, that's not good. Like, yeah. Yeah. So that have, relation. Oh, go ahead. I have a, I have a question. When you, when you were with NARC number one and NARC number two, what was it about you that you thought, Tracy, you needed to fix? Oh, they had me thinking it, it was everything. Um, they have a way of making you feel like the way they're acting is somehow your fault. And uh, mm -hmm. 
and they would, they would, they would love the fact that I was in counseling over them, you know, or, or, uh, or just in counseling in general, like, yeah, you know, you, you know, you, they love to say, they love to have these sayings, like you're too sensitive. You think too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to just relax. Uh, wow. you know, and, and this kind of thing gets you thinking like, wow, well, you know, maybe it really is me. Like maybe I have yeah. a problem. Uh, then you start to find out more information such as they're doing all these things behind your back and they're making you even more insecure about what's really happening and not happening. Mm-hmm. And then at this point, you don't know what is up, down, left, right reality from, from fate. You know, you don't even know what kind of world you're living in because everything is just, and this is what we call, you know, uh, you're you're basically living in a in in a in a bubble at this point, you know. Um, no, and no that's family, start- no family nearby. I'm sorry, you were going to say something. My I'm mom and dad talk. um were living about 45 minutes from me at this time, and uh, they they knew I was changing. All my friends and family knew I was changing. Okay, mm. um, and without getting into much about the family, um, you know, there was there was there were times I told them too much and then I would be, we would have to be at a function for say a wedding or something. And you know, when you tell your family a few things that are happening, your family's going to turn on them quick and then you're going to pay for that. Yeah. You're hold hold for on. That hold. Again because they're going to see that yeah. dad, dad's giving them a dirty look uh, at the table. You know what I mean? Let, like, let me, let me hold you, hold you for a second here. Please hold your thought there. Um, Mary Jo 10 is here. I need everyone to to know this. This is a family show. Profanity is not allowed in the comments. It will get you kicked out immediately by me and to be banned from my show. So I just want everybody to understand that. You may hear it maybe from my guest, but it is not allowed uh, in the comments. Uh, So by all means, uh, please keep that in mind. Go ahead, please. You were going to say something. Oh, um, I think I was getting at that. uh, Yeah, you know, my parents only knew so much at this time. I didn't tell them everything. I didn't tell any, I didn't tell them my friends and family half of it. Cause you know, and, and then you go through, I'm going to tell you something. I, I can't tell you how many uh, women I've worked with and yeah. men and men mm-hmm. that have said this. Okay. I'm in a field now. Remember I'm doing vocational coaching. So I'm, I'm working with people, not only that were disabled, they could have come in at one time. We had programs that were working with people that came out of jail, that came out of domestic abuse, the domestic mm-hmm. violence situations. And I'm trying to help them get a job. And here I am listening to, at the time, you know, we called them battered women. This is going back 20, you know, 2006. Wow, yeah, I mean, yeah. we were calling, you know, and they had long this time, cycle Long of time abuse. ago. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, things have really changed. Now we're knowing it's a lot deeper than domestic violence. A lot of these people yeah. you're dealing with are narcissists. So, uh, I remember looking at these women I'm working with going, my God, that will never be me. The first time they even as so much as, as talk down to me, I'm out of there. And wow. how many women say that and men say that. And then they, they find themselves in these relationships where they don't even know how they got there. They don't even have a clue. Yeah. You, right I, now, now, right, right now you have a clue, but if you had to warn someone ahead of time, Things that they can keep in mind. There are 16, 17, 18 year old young ladies, uh, 20, 21, between the ages of 16 and 30, 35, that are now watching these shows, the guests that come on. And it proves to be a learning curve for them. Yes. What would you say to them that they need to keep in mind that you've experienced? One or two things that you could highlight to them they need to keep in mind when they meet this man that seems to sweep them off their feet. One of the things I will come right out and say that a lot of people aren't talking about is if you feel this need to perform, you feel this need to have to like perform for them, to have to be better, to always have to. And, you know, a lot of people say the walking on eggshells, it's kind of like that. Like I, I, you know, I got to do this. Maybe if, maybe if I did this, he would stop doing this. Maybe oh. if uh, uh, I, I lost 10 pounds, he wouldn't be looking at pornography. Maybe if I, right, uh, right, right. when you start yeah. doing these things, something is really wrong. And, um, and the, the second thing I'll say is if you, if you find that, you know, you're, you're just not all of a sudden you start dating this, this person, 
and you're not yourself anymore, you know, you're starting to notice and other people are noticing, it's time to evaluate what you've got going on there. Because the, the one thing these people will do is they are going to get you to believe whatever it is they're telling you. They, they're very good at oh. what they do. I'll, I'll give them that. I mean, you know, th th they're master manipulators in getting you to do w their will, whatever it is they want. Yeah. Um, whether it's that you stick around, even though you caught them cheating, and because they're going to tell you everything you want to hear. Oh, I'm going to church. I'm sorry. I'm going to go see a counselor. I'm going to get on medication. You'll never see me break another object in the house again. I'll never do it again. And you'll mm. be, you know, they'll be crying. They'll they'll have their head in your lap, crying. And did you find? Like, okay. Did you find yourself? Well, did it, did it did it work on you when they started acting oh, like that? Absolutely, because they knew who I was as a person. They knew I had a big heart. And I'll tell you what, I had to learn. It took me 20 years to figure this out. I had to learn you can have a big heart, but you have to have even bigger boundaries. Wow. With a, with a big I'm heart, you I'm have sorry, to have you need to, that should be the title of your book. If you write a book, that should be it right there. You, you can have what? a big heart, but I'm, you should I'm have bigger. Right no, I'm serious with a heart attack. <laughs> that is and hey, nobody better steal that. You know you hear that on the show. <laughs> Don't you dare try to that belongs to Tracy. If I see that book out, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna become a lawyer and four years <laughs> later on I'm gonna sue you just for Tracy. That is really true. Now so your heart was leading the way throughout these relationships, not your boundaries. Yep. So and you that's you where I went you wrong. became that's where you went wrong. So yep. you became susceptible to what type of behavior? You said he was alcoholic. Obviously, he would rather have uh, sex with something other than you, a person, which shows yeah. he had a problem, which means there was a problem in the relationship. But you weren't the problem. He chose to have someone in something other than you. Yeah. But you felt that. Yeah. You know, a, a woman's intuition truly is another thing for all the ladies that are listening tonight. A woman's intuition will tell you everything you need to know everything it's just that sometimes that little birdie on her shoulder we're like no nah, get it you know get out of here like you know I, I he said he was sorry he he said he's got he knows yet he, he admitted he knows he has a problem now watch a narcissist will only admit what they did when they get caught it's the only time they're going to do it that's it well, so the rest of the time they're just projecting what they've done because they haven't been caught yet Yes. But you're saying when they get caught, they'll admit it. But then I, what What comes after that? A ton of excuses? The what? crocodile tears. The, ton the of cro excuses. crocodile tears. Yeah. Okay. And, and they're yeah. good at that, too, because you'll be sitting there being like, this poor guy had a horrible father. This poor guy never had uh, anyone teach him moral standards values. He wants to learn. That's why he's with me. And your mind will talk you into all kinds of things of making excuses for them just is what they do in life. They make excuses for themselves, and they want you to sit and make excuses for them too. So did you find yourself doing that too? You started making excuses for him? All the and, time. And he All just kept time. doing He got. And he I'll, didn't get better. He got worse. He, and in I'll other tell words. you something else. This is something I, you know, I talk about a lot on, on my channel. See, see, people don't realize sex is very – sex will link you to people – from yeah. the grave like like sex will yeah. sex is a bond and and, and it goes mm -hmm. far you're, you're exchanging souls with another person people yeah. don't want to think of it like that but it's the truth so when you're yoking with a person that's got evil thoughts that you don't even know about like what you mm -hmm. think you know is going on in their head i'll tell you something it's it's beyond a haunted house it's it's like it's satan's playground if their intent is is not good that definitely isn't something that's godlike so yeah. so the reality of it is uh, they have ulterior motives you have uh, people agreeing with you on the screen uh, uh that looks like uh feel free to put your name in by the way if not i'm going to call people jane and john does so uh that looks like paka uh please feel free to tell me your name if you could please uh it says others notice before you do did you have others trying to talk to you to help you see what was going on this one, this, this story kills me. My best friend, Jen, uh, I met, I met her the first day of college and, uh, we were inseparable ever since so we were, she's still one of my best friends of all time. We met the first day of college and I didn't know the story until I was about 
24 when I started dating uh, Narc Number One, and she watched. <laughs> it uh tracy is here uh she here. you can find her regularly you can find tracy regularly on her youtube channel tracy you were just mentioning something just a moment ago um it, it i want to can you can, yeah it did for a second uh can you still hear me by the way yes yeah okay hey i just got to say this real quick somebody We had a little momentary glitch there. Can you still hear me right now? Can you hear me right I now? Can. Testing one, two, three. Why are you doing that? Uh, do you have? Uh, yes. Unless you, it's possible. It's possible that you could be getting a call in. Uh, somebody could be phoning you or uh, no, no. You're I good. Shut that off. I shut okay, that off, so, so I don't think it's my that's hand. So, that's but. okay. Right, right now we can hear each other. I can see you just well. Can you see me comfortably? Yeah. Yeah. We're still good. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to say to Tish uh, Kirkpatrick. She was wondering, you said Sam earlier. She had no idea who that was. She's a asked that question. Um, that's Sam Vaknin, by the way. Uh, you're more than welcome to take a look at uh, his Instagram page or, or his YouTube channel, um, and then you'll get some more information on that. I, I do want to say this. Tish also highlighted, she was talking about what you were bringing about. Um, I'm just reading some more here. Please forgive me, everybody. Uh, she said soul ties. Uh, essentially, when you were talking about just having sex with anyone, you don't know who you're dealing with and who you may be connecting with, who may have ulterior motives and bad intent. Uh, so she was uh, recognizing uh, that you made a very valid point, uh, just uh, not vetting anyone and just being out there, as it were, uh, will definitely come back to haunt someone, especially with uh, narcissists everywhere. I'm trying to give it some time here to make sure we're, our signals are good and we can keep going here. You're good. We're good. If for some reason or another, yes. though, Tracy, uh, the signal gets stuck, feel free to step out of the live and come back in and yep. we'll just do it, do it all over again. Uh, there is a okay. question on there is a question okay. on the screen. I have to see what it is. So hold on one second there, Tracy. Just wait right there. Uh, how do you truly stop the false fantasy? Um, uh, when you, when you, when you're stuck on that person, that's from Mary Jo 10, excuse me. Yeah. I said there, Mary joy 10. Uh, how do you truly stop the false fantasy? Yeah. So that's the hardest part of this. I think, you know, I think the hardest part about realizing you were with a narcissist is that you, you realize that you were with a, a fake person. So you're grieving a person that never existed. You're, you're grieving the loss yes. of a relationship and a person that never existed. And this is the most mind, you know, you know, the word that you could, you could possibly yeah. go through because it's, uh, it's a battle between your mind of, but, and, and you, and you want to think of the good times. It's good. People think, want to think of good times. Look, look, good people aren't sitting around going, Oh my gosh, this person's a jerk. They did this, that, and the other thing. And this is what the mind will do. The, the mind and the brain will want to bring you back to uh, the good times. And in time, okay. your brain does this kind of, this, these kind of tricks, I call them, but they're okay. tricks because, okay. you know, I always tell people, this is one of the first things I have people do that work with me. I'll, okay. I'll share it with everybody tonight that can, can see this uh, or today. I know in California, it's still today. Yeah. Um, hey. <laughs> You're the you're the diva of the day. It's nighttime, as far as the world is concerned. But go ahead. <laughs> it's like you... Somewhere, right? Um, <laughs> well, I always tell people to get your brain on the right track. Take some sticky notes. My my room here, my office room is full of them. Okay, take okay. a sticky notepad. 
Okay. And and get a wall going so that you know it's it's a place where you know like the people in your household can't come see. Maybe maybe do a bulletin board where you're going to put okay. all these notes, put it under your bed if you live with other people. Write down every single thing the narcissist ever said and or did that was rotten. Everything. And when you start to purge this out of the subconscious area of your brain and you really start to look at what you're really dealing with, the reality, and you yeah. step back and you look at that wall, that's what you're dealing with. That's the person you were with. And wow. and, and that helps people because you'll step back and be like, my God, what is what the what the heck did I just go through for these amount of you know months, to, uh, years, whatever? Right, 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 right. Okay, so getting it out of the subconscious by beautiful, beautiful tip you just gave right now. Uh, yeah. Because I'm thinking of all of the young people who are dealing with this, and they're trying to think of this in my head. It's in my head. You're saying post-it notes, write it down, put it somewhere private for you, wherever it may be. So that you can look at what was put in your head. Yep. So you can get it out of your head. That right there is your truth board. That's the truth board. That's the truth of what you were dealing with. You see, a lot of people want to think that, uh, you know, their minds all, you know, jambled around and thinking yeah. that, you know, one minute they're thinking, okay, this was the reality. No, write it down. So that you get it out of the subconscious. The subconscious is driving a lot of this. People don't realize the brain does have a major part to play in this. And studies now prove and show that narcissistic abuse causes brain damage. The longer you're with these people, you yeah. know, and then that recovery of getting those brain cells back. Um, you, you takes long. To, yeah. Takes long. Yeah. And and so just knowing the terminologies and the phrases and the and the clinical terms excuse me, is one thing. But what you're giving us and what I love about your your, your page is that uh, outside of the fact that you don't hold anything back is that uh, <laughs> I'm such a virgin show. I, I'm so, you know, I, I, but I, I watch your stuff. Uh, you're very inspiring because what you're saying for us to do is to put into play cleaning out our brain, deleting the files that the narc has put there, the viruses that they've put into our subconscious, delete those files, or as you said earlier, purge those with a truth board of what they actually said to you that was demeaning, disparaging, and essentially discouraging and depressive. Once we can make some room in our brain, it's still going to take a while, though, to oh, recover. Yeah. We can't expect this overnight, but this is the steps we need to go in if we're going to have any good memories and happy moments that will mean anything in the future. Absolutely. You got to purge it. You got to purge it from your system. And I'll tell you what, when people start this project that I work with, it's one of the first things I tell people to do. And, you know, when, when you start a project like that, I, I tell them, I said, you're, now you're going to start your, your truth board and then you're going to get in your car and you're going to go to work and you're going to think of like five <laughs> other things that happen because I'll tell you one thing, uh, another thing I chain know. Rea chain reaction, is that what you're saying? Well, that and like you have repressed a lot of things I there are still packs in some memories that come into my head and I'm like did that really happen like that and and then I will like remind myself I had to stuff it so far down I didn't even remember you that, didn't even that remember it. And, and it and it's you you unpacked all the other stuff and all of a sudden it popped up and went like this is how it all got started this is what they said way back yes and, it, and it's That's just crazy. like it's it's just you know, and I tell people then take at that point, because you know how you remember things at the most random times, like you remember that, oh, I forgot, of I course. forgot the laundry of in, course. The, in the, yeah. you know, you're, yeah. you're already right. like four hours late, oh, I have to do the laundry again, I'm, when I get home, it's going to be, <laughs> you always think, it. but I tell people, take your phone at that point and use your voice recorder, put it Beautiful. into your notes, so when you come home, you transfer that note to the board, because you need the to see board. it, you yeah. need to visually see what this person is, yeah. it's what they are. I no, I, I agree with you. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've in, encouraged my children to do that and others. Once you see it, once it's written out and your brain knows you wrote it out and you're looking at it, the brain is like done. <laughs> the brain is like, it's like, yeah. okay, we got that out. And here comes that other thing that was underneath it. It starts to come up and the brain says, you're not going to write this out or at least talk about it. You know, and like voice note. That's a great idea. Yeah. 
you need to you need to make sure you get it all out because yeah. and you need to this is why coaching for this i believe is super important yeah, you need to I talk agree. to somebody that yeah. gets it yeah you can't be going yeah. to therapists that don't understand this yeah. stuff yeah. and there's a lot, a lot of them unfortunately out there i feel like they need a training yeah a lot of people have have been on the show a number of people have been on the show let me rephrase it that way a number of people have been on the show and they've been victims and survivors and to hear what they say in a show prep i know you and i did a show prep together you know what i mean we were practicing before the show and to hear them tell their stories the stories i've heard of people who've gone to therapists that the therapist did not get it it is not a beautiful thing no nope. it is it not actually set people back years no it has and, i've had look, people listen, tell me that I yeah. think that's what happened. Yeah. Well, as I don't think I know that also played a major, major role in me staying with the three of them that I did. Um, you know, this last one had the that I unfortunately married um, a nightmare. For, you know, here I am already studying about narcissism. He comes into my life, and it, this was this was the devil's like last major trick with me. Although he still had a few tricks up his sleeve, even recently. But I figured it out. But anyway, <laughs> you know, but this was this was not even funny. And I mean, he he actually enjoyed going to this counselor because you know what he enjoyed? He enjoyed pulling one over her too. Yep, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. right. Same. A little e ego stroke all yep. the way. I oh, got yeah. her. I got her, and I can get you too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. She. I remember her saying to me, Tracy, I don't think he's a narcissist. I think he just has sex addiction. <laughs> Wait, you 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 agreed with it, and you decided to give him more another room chance and latitude, or, or yeah. three or four chances, five for chances, him to abuse I'm married to him. Yeah, that's the How? other thing too. When you unfortunately yoke up with one of these, and it's very sad, and it's it the the word words don't describe what happens to people when they realize before it's too late like who did i marry i don't even know who this person is and this is why i now will tell people and stress to people take your sweet 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 time getting to know someone like stretch it out oh my god i, I tell my clients all the time i'm like what are you doing going to people's houses cut that out like you meet each other publicly for like three months stop three months. that you know what I mean? Like, don't you don't need you don't need dinner at his house. You were eating dinner before you ever met him. <laughs> it's just like you know, don't, don't do it. Don't like, be happy to have somebody cook for you. You go to restaurants and they cook for you. You don't right. you don't even you don't even ask them to go to bed. So what do you, what do you, just, you have some moral. Have some moral. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, people want to go so fast nowadays. That's the problem. Yeah. You're gonna get you're gonna get with one of these. You're gonna go down the aisle, and then all of a sudden, you're, it's like I married an axe murderer. <laughs> you get you mean, get that COVID love going on. <laughs> yeah. That COVID romance, and you just yeah, get tired of being in the house. Yeah, you just. Get... <laughs> uh, listen. Oh, but wait I... a second. We gotta yes, talk that. about this for a second. Okay. Be very very leery, guys, of these narcs online because a narc oh, online. Oh, see, now oh. you're directing the show. See, now I had you on my show. I didn't ask you to come on direct the show. I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> well, no, you're gonna go jump to that. I was gonna get to that. Okay, no, nope, we'll do it now. We'll do it okay. now. We have gone 43 minutes talking, and I've enjoyed myself immensely. But this, I've been waiting to talk to you about. Okay. Um, because I have uh, religiously watched your videos. Uh, so, um, narcs online posing as individuals to help others forget the the straightforward stuff that they can do when they get in chats and other things like that that's not what we're talking about everybody yeah. we are literally and uh, many podcasters uh myself have talked to and many are very kind to warn me ahead of time they've literally given me individuals names and so forth i haven't put those out there but these people get online and they're narcissists and they pose as if they're coaches and a number of other things Yep. Or they're going to tell their story, and they're really not trying to make anybody better. Yep. And then there are those who actually want to help others. We're not talking yes. about them. We're talking about what you're about to speak to right now. Please, what is it on your mind when it comes to that kind of a person online, social media, narc? You know, when I started the channel three years ago, and all these people... <laughs> I know, you're I know you're editing yourself as you speak, so I really give you a great <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Well, look, look, you know, some of On my this opinions, family show. Well, some of my opinions I I've learned to keep to myself because <laughs> I, I hear enough from my clients anyway. Like, I But, you know, one of the things I want to tell people about, first of all, we'll, get, we'll talk about the coaches for a minute. 
I I saw right through many, if not most of them, and um, one one in particular. And no, I'm not gonna no name. I'm not gonna name no, names. No names. Don't, don't get. I don't want to get sued. Go ahead. No, no I, don't wanna, I don't. I don't <laughs> throw shade. I don't throw shade at them. But there. But I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you one thing. Um, if you go to their like uh, conferences that they have or whatever, and you're feeling something's really off about this person that you were kind of looking up to, like go with it because you called it. There's a coldness to them. They're, and uh, the other thing I'm going to say, too, is, like, if you watch their facial expressions, these people don't smile genuinely. They don't <laughs> laugh. They don't, uh, they don't, they don't have a personality. You know, they're just talking about all the information. All the information they're just going to talk about all the information. Talk I'm about sorry. All. I didn't see it coming. But I'm going to find a way to cut that out and record it and put it on a button I got. So if in my console, I can push it. It'll be your voice then. Just... <laughs> That's what it's like. Go ahead. That's what it's like. You no know, personality. I know can, what you mean. You can tell. You can tell. Okay. The other thing I'm going to say, too, is you can tell that they're in it for the money. They blew yep. up. Because they, they had a platform for people. Listen, yep. they were given good information because the information they were given was about themselves. And then um, on top of it, okay, on top of it, um, it's sad, though. What, what's sad That's about true. us, what's so sad, though, is yeah. if someone's in a desperate place, they're going to pay $400 an hour to That's talk to this right. person. That's, That's horrible. Right. Yeah, you know that's right. I, what I pay my my accountant literally what I charge my accountant literally says to me the last two years are you serious? <laughs> I just like if I was your accountant, I look at you like it, it. I don't even know what it is, but I would be like, okay, you know that so and so over here is charging seven hundred bucks, said. right? Do you, you do know that these people over here are charging <laughs> seven eight, and people are giving them a thousand a thousand dollars as a two or three hundred dollar tip? I so think it's like. Yeah, like, but it, it's happening. It's so wrong it's happening. because the, the way I see it, if I charge what I charge, I'm going to get more people that I can help through this. And that's what it's about for me. Like, you know, when I started the, yeah. the channel, yeah. my, that was my first thing I said to myself was if I'm doing, if I could help save one person yeah. from what I went through for the last 20 years, I do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. You know, um, I never thought when I started the channel it was going to become a business. I never, ever thought that. Yeah. I just said, hey, this feels good to be able to tell my story without somebody going, yeah. no, that's not how it happened. No, you, you didn't see that. That didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you know, it's funny. I, so I, I start this uh, channel with my daughters, and the next thing I know, people are coming on going, like, finally, somebody believes me. And I was going, like, so people don't believe you? And then I was, like, I was really intrigued. I was going, like, they had family members that don't believe them. But they had a stranger online telling them, I believe you, but if you give me two or three hundred dollars, I'll believe you even more more. Oh. That's essentially what I was being told well, as like, we started this last year. And I went like, No, you know what? I'm gonna do a whole year, it's, it's money out of our pocket, and let's just do this. And then what I found is is that there were people like what you're talking about, these coaches and others that were coming in like wolves in sheep's clothing. Yeah. And literally fleecing people. Yes. And yes. it was amazing to hear their stories when people would talk to me that they, I went to this person and I went to this person. And then once like I paid, it's like, I got a book, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, I couldn't even call them, you know, I, yeah, you know, they horrible. would, you know, it was, it was just amazing, but people are really struggling with this narcissistic abusive relationship dynamic that so many are experiencing, yeah. but your channel on YouTube, it is geared to help individuals through prayer and through other aspects and the, the spiritual aspects because yeah. many are losing their love for the Bible and, and a number of other things in life simply because they don't want to get out of bed anymore, Tracy. They don't want to shower. They don't want to fix their hair. They just don't feel like doing anything anymore because yeah. that narc seemed to have sucked them dry. Been there, You're, done that pl plenty of times. What was it like for you when you were in those moments? It's. I think it's indescribable. I don't. I don't think words describe how the, it's like the lowest place you're ever going to go, and that's why they came into your life. So people have to understand this. That this is a spiritual battle. Like you need to like prepare. This is spiritual warfare. These people come into your life for three diff for three reasons: to kill, steal, and destroy. To kill your spirit to try and steal your soul and destroy you in the process. 
Wow. It's the only, that's, that's what they're there for. That's what they're doing. And they will stop at nothing. I just talked the other day on my channel about how they've already done enough damage to you. And then they discard you like yesterday's trash. Like you didn't, you weren't wow. even in their life for the amount of time you were. You didn't matter. You weren't important. And wow. then they're still trying to hurt you. Mom, they still, com still coming back. Still coming back for some more. Yep. Or putting things online, knowing full well it's going to hurt you or upset you. Or, or, you know, trying to, they'll, they'll, they'll go to all lengths, all lengths to try and destroy you still after they've done their damage. And that's sick. When, when you were experiencing that, or if you're still experiencing that, that they want to come back for more bites. They want to chew a little bit more on the victim, the prey, the empath. When they wanted more from that good-hearted person, did you give it to them? And when did it stop? When did you go like, no, I need bigger boundaries to protect my big heart? Yeah, you know, um, when I realized with the last one that uh, I unfortunately married, um, like you can't even call it that. It wasn't a marriage, and he was certainly not a husband. I mean, those are titles wow. you can't even give it. Um, wow. He, I, I said, I finally said to myself, it actually had to do with Instagram. How funny is that? Oh, he loved going on Instagram and doing all kinds yeah, of things behind yeah. my back. But mm -hmm. I saw, I remember I was meeting for him in the parking lot to have dinner. And we were doing this, you know, back and forth thing. I was 45 minutes away from him living in my grandmother's house. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had, he, he was, he wanted to come to me. And I knew it's because I'm like, he's got other women in Rhode Island. That's what's going on. That's oh, why he's coming he didn't want you showing up over there. Got yeah. it. Got it. Yeah. I figured that. I mean, when you, when you start to figure them out, like they're not changing. It's just that they're switching up their tactics on how they're hiding it. So um, yeah. I'm, I remember sitting there at the bar waiting for him to, to sit down for dinner. And I looked down and his lights on, on Instagram and Facebook. I'm like that. That jerk is sitting in his car in the parking lot, entertaining some broad right now. While I'm sitting wow. in the restaurant waiting for him, and that was that was my last straw. I just said I just dealt with this for almost eight years of my life. Like I said to myself, I'm not doing another round of this. I won't do an, I won't give you one more chance to hurt me again. Wow, done. I'm done. done. Absolutely done. Chapter chapter done. Book finished. Yep. We're done. Yep. I mean, it, it just, it's so unfortunate that people have to, have to, they go back and they could, because what, 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 what they're doing is they're essentially believing what they're telling them. I didn't mean it. I know I have sex. I have a, I have a problem. I just want attention all the time. They'll admit these things. They'll look full on, admit it like Sam Bachman can. They'll admit it. Hmm. But then, they, but then they, they, they have no impulse control. They're going to go back and do it again. They have this thing too, where if you tell them like, please don't do that. It hurts me. If they're really malignant, they're like, it's oh, like I'm going to go yeah. and do it as soon as yeah. we get off the phone. Okay. I have to admit, I, I learned that from two people for sure. Both my guests, Sam Vacton actually told me the same exact thing. Do not ever tell a narc what hurts them, what hurts you. And uh, Leon Walker, another one, a guest that I had, he said the same thing. The, whatever you do, you tell them that. That's yeah. like that's like found money to them. Yeah, they're they're ready to run with that, and yeah. you, you be guaranteed you're going to be hurting from that again, but worse. Yes. And so you found yourself in a situation that was not emotionally safe and making you better. You made a choice and a decision to choose better. How has it gone since you made that decision? I, for anyone listening to this, I just want you to know that a lot of you wonder, is the grass greener? Is it, uh, am I going to regret it? You know, maybe we can make this work. If you know you're dealing with a narcissist, there is nothing you can do but get out. And I'll tell you what, God bless my life when I got out. And you want to know why I think that? I think it's because I finally was sticking up for, for a child of God. I was sticking up for one of, for one of his people that truly mm -hmm. believes in him. But when you're with a narcissist, it's, it's interesting. You can't, there's, 
when you're with a narcissist, there really is no God in your life. You, you could be going to church every week. That's but true. You're I've heard that before. False idol when you're with, yeah, when you're with a narcissist. Yeah. And because they, they, they perceive that they come before God. They literally, yes. Yes. I mean, the stories I've heard from my guests, it's amazing. They think they are better than anything yes. or anyone in the universe. Yes. And, and, and so, you know, you, you realize yeah. that you're, everything's off balance. And when you can get away from these people and really go no contact is the only time you can actually see everything for what really, really is and really was. And at that point, your life's going to change. I mean, I mean, look what happened in three years. Like I started, if you would have told me three years ago, you're going to start your own business. You're going to, mm. you're going to have clients. You're going to help them through narcissistic abuse. You're going to yeah. be really busy. <laughs> you're going to be building yeah. retreats for people, having well, a prayer and fast group every month. I would have been like, yeah, right. Who, <laughs> who are you listening to? Like, so God what? blessed me. Because Three I years. had the right intentions, and I stuck up for myself. Finally, I stuck up for myself. Kind of, kind I, of hard, kind of hard to help others if you don't stick up for yourself, right? Well, you know, I, you know what, guys, this is what you got to do. You got to stick up for that person that at twenty-two, or even the person when you were a child that did not know what they were dealing with. You got to stick up for for that little kid, and you got to stick up for the person that didn't know. And, and all those years that you didn't know, you got to stick up for that person finally. Yeah. I like you, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I like you. Because I don't have to say it. You say it. I, I just, I just, oh, I'm so happy that you came on the show. Uh, we have gone uh, 56 minutes. And I know you uh, are a busy woman. Uh, yes. Last night, you were throwing it down. Uh, were you throwing yeah. it down last night? Yeah, were you throwing, was, were you throwing it, it down, down last night? I just, I just, I just had to, I had to say that that way because that's kind of the way here on the West Coast we kind of say it when somebody's uh, either throwing it down or spinning, spinning records. Uh, or you're you DJ on Thursdays. Yeah. Correct? Yep. Just yeah. recently, yeah, this is a new thing for me, which um, I'm really, really happy because I didn't know what he wanted me to spin, but when he said '70s, '80s, '90s, I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> I can see you. I can see you. If you would have said, you know, we really want, we want more of that Lawrence Welk kind of feeling in here. <laughs> Just kind of that American bandstand feeling in here. And you were like, that ain't happening, bro. So come on, tell us what I, it was like real quick before I got to get to some other stuff I want to ask you about. And everybody's uh, oh, talking amongst themselves. Hi, but, guys. Yeah. I, see, I recognize you. See it? you. I recognize a lot of Who? you. Thank you for being here. Oh, Nar thank Nar you, Narcissist Remedy. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and oh. Bet Betty Baca and a few others thank are here. Uh, Betty, Mad PR, thank you guys. Kay Caring, I know all of you. <laughs> but yeah, um, what were we saying? <laughs> so <laughs> you were, th yeah, you were throwing it down. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's been so fun. Uh, you know, being in a band and playing originals for years and touring, you have to do this thing where people like they don't they don't know if they like you because it's your music and they don't know the song so they you know right. they, they kind of do this thing. they're waiting they're waiting for something they can actually latch on to so they can show you they like your song okay yeah <laughs> so when we would throw some covers in it they're like and we would do our own rendition because my brother and i were a two-piece that set up as like five no. people we switched okay. instruments we looped wow. instruments and that was our thing and we still get together and do stuff and we're still going to but anyway to be able to like um play the songs that I think are good. And then other people are like, Oh, she's got this. Like she knows how to keep us dancing. I was like, yeah. So it's not just me that likes these songs. <laughs> like, I think I have a good ear for music, you know, it's not just in Tracy's head. It's real. And that's <laughs> kind of the, that's kind of the life you have with a narcissist. Any, any, anyone that has to deal with that. It's not in your head. Would you say you can tell something is off. If you're in a relationship and you can tell something is off, and they don't want to work toward resolving it and work towards some type of resolution for the sake of peace and longevity of the relationship, there's a pretty good chance that they are self-centered and they are focusing only on their secret agenda that is now coming out. So, um, yeah. okay, here we go. I normally yeah. have people on the show, and uh, sometimes I play a game with them. And uh, now... I don't uh, like games, Paxton. Uh, well, you know, I, I, I know that uh, you have just said you've expressed yourself that you don't like games. I did not know that. 
but I really don't care. But what I was gonna say is, is that, now this is you. this is the this is the thing. Now everyone here will probably want to disappear except your close friends. But I'm going to play something I've never done with anybody else, oh and that is name that song. Oh God! <laughs> so, th no, this is not going to be anything like you're imagining right now because I'm going to do this literally off the top of my head. I thought okay. about it. Okay, we were talking right before the show, and as soon as we hung up from each other and we're done, I thought of it then, and I went like, okay. And whatever song pops in my head, I'm going to see if you can name it. Okay, I'm okay. not going to play. I'm not going to play the song. Oh, okay. I'm just going to say the title of the song. Okay. Part of it, that is. So here we go, real quick. She's a super freak. <laughs> oh, my you didn't just say. You didn't just say super freak, did you? Did you just say super freak? <laughs> just, a, just a what did you just say? In the, right. In the, the, <laughs> okay. A lot of them, not even close to what I was thinking, but she's, I uh, just she's a she's brick a, house. She's a brick oh, house is what I was thinking. <laughs> but you said she's a super freak. I don't. Okay, Tracy's going into intervention now. <laughs> she's, getting, <laughs> she's getting her super freak out of her body. So <laughs> that's okay. So is that is that? Look, Tish, Tish, is, Tish is saying man eater too. Okay, I sh I could I could have went I could have went that route. I'm a big Dal uh, oh. Daryl Hall and Oates fan. Been to their concerts, but I just want to say, okay. One of the chapters so. in my book is going to be called is going to be called the year of being a man eater, and uh, I, I, that's okay. a, that's an interesting chapter there you go. in my life. There you when go. I flipped All right. the switch. There was a year of I called it my year of narcissism. <laughs> a year of nar wait, that's when you really got involved in your research and everything. Is that what it was? Uh, it was between. Narc number one and two. I was oh, okay. back and forth between both of them, and I had had enough. Okay. I was on tour. I had a boyfriend in every state, and yeah. I was I was just like, you know what? What a role! <laughs> what a role model! What a role model! You really 27, 20, 28, I had had enough, and um, you had enough. Okay. I was I was the man role for about a year there, but you know that I get into that in the book. I it didn't feel right for me. I didn't I didn't like acting like that. You know, yeah. uh, a yeah. player. Um, yeah. Now, it gets now boring. <laughs> you love music. Yes. If you had to name Narc 1 and Narc 2 by means of a song title, oh, God. I just made it up. I just made it up because it's my show. So, so, <laughs> so and, and uh, Paca says Man Eater too. Everybody, everybody loves the Man Eater. Uh, thank you, Tish. You had no idea I was going to say Barrick House. I like the way you wrote that. Barrick. <laughs> okay, so if you had to name Narc 1 and Narc 2 with a music title or, or a, a name of a song, use a name of a song to name them instead of saying Narc 1 and 2, what would be the title that you would give them for Narc oh, number God. 1? Yeah. Narc Narc one. Number we'll... one, uh, sympathy for the devil. So, <laughs> just, you just, uh, I got nothing to say to that. <laughs> just, um, and second Narc... one, psycho killer. So, okay, now you're saying number two was more of a handful to live with and be around than Narc one. Number, number two was a so sociopath. Wow. What like, hands down a sociopath? Like, yeah. I, I wouldn't even that story is just that's that's all like I said I haven't even talked about half of this stuff because it needs to go in a book because there's that many yeah there's put that in a much book. detail around it yeah yeah get it out of you put it in a book so if that's the case then the type of woman that you are right now would you consider yourself to be the type of woman that when you were 22 26 that that young girl would be afraid of you now or would she draw closer to you? Uh, I think she would draw closer to me because she would need some kind of guidance and some answers for what the heck is going on around, around her. And look, you know, in my day, you know, we're going back 20 years ago at this point, I'm 40 years old. So we were going back 18 years ago. You're just a baby. You're just a baby. Oh, yeah. You're just a baby. No, you know what I said the other day? I'm take gonna, it, take I'm, it from I'm, a 60 year old man. You're just a baby. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm hitting okay. the restart button, man. I'm going back. There That's you go. You're going back. You're I'm going, going back. back. I'm, I'm resetting back in the time. 20s and 30s. 40s <laughs> and 20, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, about, that's about right. No, you're about right. 
they say you know 50 60 is about the new 30 and 40 but go right ahead so so <laughs> yeah. when it comes to when it comes to a young woman who's in her 20s or younger and she met you you would be a source of encouragement to her is that the type of audience you have on your youtube yes and you know um I'm trying to hit the younger people even more. That's the only reason I'm doing, last I'm doing week the I got, same. Yeah. 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 It's the only reason last week I got on TikTok, but I'm trying to reach the younger people. <laughs> you say it with such, dis you so, with such disdain. The, no, it's going to be tick fun. Like, hey, you are old. You go the TikTok. Go ahead. The TikTok. <laughs> no, it's going to be fun because I'm going to make, uh, you know, I have, I have my sense of humor and we know that you can, it's yeah. all about the sense yeah. of humor. You can, you can throw That's that true. in there, but. But to get to the younger people, um, <clears throat> I'm still, I, I was waiting for the whole COVID thing to be over. And I want to reach high school kids. I want to actually tour high schools and talk to kids about this, um, about, about toxic relationships. They need to yeah. learn about, they're not teaching kids about toxic relationships in high school. Wow. So this is a this is a goal of mine. This is something I want to do. This is something I've been wanting to do. And when I was about to do it and go into all these high schools, everything happened with COVID. And, and there's still some around here that are going remote and everything. So we're yeah. going to get back into it. And, and I plan to do that because, yeah, they, they need education on this. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you a thousand percent. You you would be an excellent person uh, and an excellent uh, speaker. Uh, you would you would make a great awareness speaker. I just made that term up. Awareness speaker. No, Maybe that would be my uh, job uh, title. An, an awareness. Job, hey, hey my make job it up. Was hey, I said, I don't have there you it. go. You're you're an you're an awareness motivational speaker. <laughs> you you make people aware. You motivate people to make them aware of things that are beneficial. What is he? What we got on the screen there? Uh, Cindy says yes to help the younger generation. My grandchildren. This is something that is a common theme that's taking place for a lot of people who have. Uh, freed themselves from narcissistic abuse. They're looking at their children and grandchildren and they're recognizing that, wait a minute, no one is speaking out concerning this type of a behavior. And people are being seduced. Women are being seduced into these relationships uh, with these men. And uh, hey, you know, you have a YouTube channel. Men are finding themselves, uh, as it were, uh, being seduced into a relationship with female narcissists. So a number of individuals are recognizing that relationships are not what they used to be because there are more people disguising their agenda. Yep. More players, more games, as you were saying a little bit earlier. But what they've come to recognize is, is that there are YouTube channels like yours in which uh, you don't hold back. Nope. <laughs> you've, you been on, you've been on really great behavior with me today, and I'm just... <laughs> You, I wanted you know, I wanted to t thank you for that. You've been so kind <laughs> on my family program to be sweet, but I know that you you lay into it on your channel. And if anybody wants the, a change of pace uh, from Narc Abuse TV and you want to uh, pick up the picante, please uh, go to uh, Tracy's uh, YouTube channel for the fun of it. Your YouTube channel is entitled is named what? Trace Space It. Yes. Somebody else has that name you wanted to beat up i mean you wanted to uh to have is somebody else has that same name or no how, how does it go no that's not you i thought that was you who does somebody else has uh you wanted to tracy didn't you or was it trace maybe i misread that posting that you had somebody? ignore me oh, okay. don't, don't, i'm no, so I thought, confused right now i don't know what we're talking about <laughs> no no it makes two of us right now i thought there was a different name that you were going to name the show but i you know hey my second show after a few days i'm lost don't mind oh, me. Yeah, no, the, the, the YouTube channel. So my website is TraceSpaceIt.com. The okay. YouTube is TraceSpaceIt. TikTok's TraceSpaceIt. Uh, okay. Instagram, TraceSpace underscore it. Um, okay. Uh, oh, somebody follow You see that, right? She has her caca baloney moment. Yeah, I know. I know. Did you? I, saw, I was waiting for you to do it. I tried to set you up to even say it. A couple of questions <laughs> that I had, and you totally didn't say it, but somebody wrote it in the comments. <laughs> That's the okay. That's the first time I ever heard anyone say that those two words together that were not related to me. And so now I'm going to add now that it now that it came up, and I was going to save it because we're almost done. But since someone wrote it out, what was it? What are, what are the words again? What what is it that you say? Baloney. I've had enough of the cock baloney. 
my gr my my accent, you know? okay i don't know about that all i know is i knew someone who had an arkansas accent that would say it and that was my grandmother oh really and when you said it the first a number of years ago when i saw your video and you said it i rolled over laughing <laughs> i was busting up because you said <laughs> that and i you know what's so interesting about you is you are a person who loves to share wisdom you're not trying to tell people what to do, but your wisdom inspires them to do something instead of nothing. But yeah. you don't you don't hold them uh, hostage if they do nothing. You let them know exactly that they are their own roadblock. Yeah. But you don't berate them or you don't put them down, but you give them wisdom and you try to motivate them to at least do something. So that yeah. you don't stay stuck, as it were, the common expression today, but you don't stay in the same groove because that's somebody else setting up that abuse for you. You can get yeah. out of that. I like I just like the way you do. It. I just wanted to tell you that. Oh, thanks, Paxton. Yeah. I mean, I know what it's like. I mean, you know, um, without getting too heavy into it, I still have some people in my life I have to deal with yeah. that are this way. And it's not easy. It's 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 a very challenging thing. And I think for most, many if not most people too, I just want to say that nine times out of ten, when you realize you're you're linking up with these people intimately, something represents something of your childhood. Uh, there's there's something you know that you got to go back yeah. and see who is the character yeah. in your life that kind yeah. of represented this prideful, arrogant, never willing to admit they're wrong kind of thing around Unapp you. unappreciative to you, underestimate you. Yep. berate you, all those things. Um, I've had a number of psychologists on, and you sound exactly like them. They, they, yep. they say the exact same thing. And it's sometimes, many times, it's hard for people to stop and do what you just said they should do. Yeah. Psychologists say the same thing. You need to stop. And it's not a matter of how you got into it. It's why you got into it. Yep. And when you, you will be able to trace it back to somebody that you grew up with or that was in your life and it's a yes. repetitive pattern, and you just have to now know, hey, that's not for me anymore. Yes, exactly. So there's there's something that felt familiar with all these yeah. people. There's some familiarity yeah. there, and that's true. you know, you could call it familiar spirits in the Bible, or you could call it, true. you know, strongholds, as somebody wrote here, strongholds. Yeah. Exactly. Wrote, but yeah. you, you got to go just, back just. in time and say, okay, like I said earlier, and stick up for that little kid, stick up for that person yeah. that didn't have a voice, that didn't know what was happening. Yeah. 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 And, and, and recognize that's what you're doing. Uh, others may not, but there will be a lot of people that recognize, hey, you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Because you're putting an end to this. Because if you don't put an end to this, that person's going to keep coming back. They're going to keep doing this yeah. to you. And it, it's going to keep getting worse. Uh, and as some have seen and have experienced, uh, it, it gets to physical violence. And as we have seen, some have literally lost their life to people like this. That's because right. their boundary... Uh, I love the way you said it. Their boundary was not as big as their heart. Their heart was so big that their boundaries were low, and therefore that person kept abusing them. Um, yeah. You set up new boundaries for yourself. Yes. You are now three years removed from the chaos that was happening, but chaos, time, unforeseen circumstances and occurrences, situations find us all. But you choose to live a life away from individuals who are, narcissists who yep. even though they may still come around and be a part and you have to deal with them overall yep. what has life been like trying to make your life narc free before we end the show we've gone an hour and almost uh, 15 minutes here oh, now wow. last words what has it been like for you trying to live life narc free and stay focused on what is positive it's it's so it's so easy, you guys, because what I have to say is when you look at people's again, look at people's character and integrity, and that's what's gonna determine for you whether they stay or they go. And with with certain friends and family, um, I'm constantly doing maintenance. You know, I'm constantly like checking in on uh would I do that to this person? And if the answer is no, uh, we probably are not, or we're not equally yoked here in a friendship or, or a relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't do that to you. And therefore, you know, I, we're, we're not, you go find people of your kind and they, you know, without, without putting labels and all this kind of stuff into it. Um, mm -hmm. 
uh, you just have to look at, okay, I want to have people in my life that treat me the way I would treat them. And, it, and if there's only, that means there's only two of them, so be it. Your life's going to be that much more peaceful and you're going to have progress and you're going to have success in your life because you're not dealing with all these people thinking, well, I have to, they're my family or they're, they're my friend of 20 years. I have clients that had, you know, just are just putting an end to relationships of 20 something years, recognizing this person was not a good friend. No. Yeah. I, I've, I've heard that quite a bit since we've been doing this. Uh, there are so many people that are more concerned. I even, the point you just made about the labels, there's so many people concerned about the labels and this or that. If, I like how you said that. If I wouldn't treat that person that way and they seem to have that behavior on repeat, that's a problem. Yep. And I can't yep. let time make me stay. I'm not, I'm not in prison. I'm not wearing, you know, stripes. I'm not wearing exactly. orange. I don't have to stay and let somebody continue to attack my dignity. <laughs> it's yep. not like I'm in prison just because we've been knowing each other. I know yes. the guy down. I know the guy down at the gas station, Mark. But I don't <laughs> hang out with yes. him and let him abuse me. So, so uh, you know, I, I see uh, Ch Tish. Thank you for the question. Uh, I, I never talk about uh, my life when it comes to whether I. Yeah, uh, we don't know about uh, were you. Paxton. Uh, the question was, Paxton, were you with a narcissist? And I want you to know right now, I think the person at the supermarket is a narcissist. So I'm with them sometimes when I have to pay them and get groceries. So that answers your question. When it comes to <laughs> the show is not about me. The show is about you, Tracy, and everybody else. But thank you, though, Tish, for, for your question. But I'm going to go with Paca to end the show. Paca says, uh, uh, I am just amazed, Paca, that they will kill you. Isn't that kind of the way you started talking? The show, you were saying they will kill this, they will kill that, they will, they come to destroy this, they come to destroy that. If yeah. you recognize you're with someone that's living a life like that, you need to go to Tracy's channel. If Tracy's channel doesn't work for you, you need to go there anyhow. So, <laughs> I was gonna say, so I know how bad I am. I'm so bad. That's okay. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> they, they get to, hey, this is free TV. So, what are they going to do? <laughs> it's not Nielsen's rating. I'm not going to get, you know, canceled. <laughs> So, so Somebody was asking earlier, real quick, Paxton, if you if you are tape if you're recording this, I don't think you are, right? It's no, yes, no. It will it will be on the page. Yes, okay. it will be on the page, and uh, uh, it, it you will find it because you will see Tracy's picture wherever you see Tracy's picture. Picture, just click on it, and Tracy will pop up, and okay. you will have this entire show. Uh, until my until my executive producers decide to not have it on Instagram anymore, yeah. I shouldn't have said that. Ooh, they, Instagram has been so kind to us and not not get rid of us. <laughs> but uh, you will definitely find it uh, on YouTube without a doubt on our on our YouTube channel. You will see it, uh, this show. Uh, so if you don't find it ever here on Instagram anymore, she will live on it on YouTube. And uh, Tracy, you will get a copy as well. I'll we'll okay. talk to you about that so that okay, you have cool. a copy. You can do what you want to do with it. Everybody has been so kind being here. Uh, the tech professor, uh, the pack coach, uh, Tish, thank you for your question. What, uh, Tish, what are you saying? Uh, Tish says, sorry, I just thought because you have concern for others hurt by narcs. Well, I actually also have concern for penguins, but I've never owned one, but I, I, I do donate every, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> this, this show, the whole function of this show is to showcase people like Tracy because there are so many people that are experiencing narcissistic abuse, but they don't, they didn't know Tracy existed. They didn't know a, a lot of my guests. Uh, but today I'm going to tell you, Tracy, now this, uh, I posted that you were coming on the show, you know, we were doing this before and, uh, I call it blowing up uh, anytime more than 20 people are going like, Oh, they're looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. We had no idea who she was. That's why I do the show. Yeah. For, for, yeah. for, for, I don't look for 20 people to respond. If one person does, I'm happy. But I had 20, over 20, I don't know, 21, 22, there are about 23 people. They who follow the show was like, I have no idea who she was. And then they went to your page. That's awesome. So and see. then I let them, I let them know we rescheduled it, of course. And then we, we are doing this today. And I know a few of them are here. And, and I know the rest of them will watch it back later. That's why we do this, Tish, is because. People like Tracy need to be discovered. And as Cindy says, great show, enjoyed it much. I truly appreciate that. But I want everybody to strap in 
and get ready for the ride because season number three is coming. And my daughters are my executive producers. And that's going to be in 2022 when we start again. But as we end the second season, we're going to be doing a lot more on YouTube. So um, pay attention to that because we're going to be showcasing Tracy some more. She's just now finding that out. Um, and we're going, to, we're going to make sure others know about these channels like Tracy's and others because there are a lot of people Googling this behavior mm -hmm. and finding out. And I'm talking 40 years married. I'm talking and yeah. people are finding out, oh, my goodness. I thought everybody got treated this way. And yeah. they're finding out that they need to put a stop to it and set up stronger, taller uh, boundaries, thicker boundaries. Uh, along with the beauty of their big heart, like you, Tracy. You're a beautiful person. You really are. I really like you. I told you, I wasn't playing around. And everybody I've had on my show, I like. But I'm telling you, I like you and your straightforwardness. And you're pulling out the sword like King David and want to run people through and, and chop off the head of Goliath. You just amaze me. You're just like, it's like, if you're a dude, I'm like, don't give her a gun. Don't give her a sword. <laughs> she will hurt people. You're like bad. It's like, you just like... You'd be all right. You know what? In the ghetto, you would be just fine. <laughs> we could, hey, listen, we I could lived drop. in the ghetto for years. Oh, that what? must be why when I lived in the ghetto. That explains so it. That why. explains it. Then because we drop. <laughs> you know what? We drop, We put you a, out here in California. They have the Bloods and the Crips. And I've had relatives that have been in, in both sides of that. And and it's like we would drop you. The expression is out here is you could take that girl. Put a put a red hat on her and a blue shirt and drop her in the neighborhood and nobody would mess with her. <laughs> it's like she, everybody would be the Crips and the Bloods would mess with you. Both both of the gangs would leave you alone. That's the kind of person you are. You like bad. My, my name like, would be Kaka Balonia. <laughs> KB, it'd be KB. Get your hat. You KB. need it. You should do it. You should do. It. You should hashtag KV and and it'd be for your people. And get some shirts with KV on it, and then right underneath it, put your put your website or your YouTube channel. Oh and you God. should you should market those. Your people KB. would buy those. I hey wait, you forget that. I'm not buying one. I'm from, you're from the hood. You should send me one. I do like Ice T. <laughs> do like Ice T says to me. Uh, I that's will a whole send other you. Thing. I will send you merch. I gotta make a note of that. <laughs> I hey, I'll put it on. Hey, we do we do a YouTube show together. I'll wear it. I'll wear it. Yay. But you should. I'll, you I should be. Yours too. You gotta send yours. I will, without a doubt. We'll, we'll send you some. You should hashtag them. You should hashtag KB. <laughs> KB. I've been Operation Evil since 2018. <laughs> That's right. I love when you say that. you got to do some superhero. you got to get somebody to draw you as a superhero <laughs> and stand in there with that little th that you say, that Operation Shutting Down. How do you say it? How do you say it? How do you say it? Uh, it's, this is Operation shut Evil, and it's yeah. time we shut it down. <laughs> it's like, you need theme music. You should you should. You should get some. I know, I'm a musician. Why haven't I created that yet? What is like, wrong hello. with you? What is? What I, are you doing what here? Is That's wrong with me. <laughs> That's your wheelhouse. That is your wheelhouse, girl. All right. Thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate oh, this. You've you been amazing. This has been so great. Um, I really appreciate you. You did. You did good for your first time, huh? Oh yeah. I know. Even I, didn't, the, I, yeah. I didn't swear. I uh, I, I behaved myself. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! I was ready for you to do it. I was ready for you to do it. <laughs> Wait, I was good. As soon as you did it, I was gonna do this. It would have been too late to do it, but I was just gonna press that button anyhow, just to make people think of something else. <laughs> but you never did. Okay, so we better go before you do it. Uh, wait, oh. some, wait, Cindy says she'll buy one. Uh, and uh, uh, Cindy's also saying do it. She said, hey, so you better make that shirt. You better make those KV shirts, uh, hashtag KV. <laughs> and everybody's going to read it and go like, what does that mean? And it's all going to be tied back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get somebody, your KV real shirt? Real quick, somebody wanted to know the other day. I, I have my cup that says fart now loading. <laughs> and somebody goes, do you have that on a T-shirt? I'm like, no, but I should come. <laughs> oh, uh, you better. I got, you better, my, I, got my, my I saw that, yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Hey, what? Well, yeah, you know, you ever feel really bored? You know, I'll, I'll give you my address. You can send me one of your shirts. You know, I, okay. I saw your, I saw your shirt. So, and and we'll be happy to get something over to you. Um, okay. we got this design company. They keep making stuff, but I'm just going to throw this in real quick. Your, uh, what is it? Shutting, yeah, shutting down. Well, how do you put it? Whatever you KB, on the shutting down operation. Evil. Okay, that that should be on some leggings. 
that should be on the, should be like on some leggings on the side. And if somebody going to the gym, they're going a guy's going, you know, a narc's gonna look at it and go like, what does that mean? And she's gonna go, it applies to you. Yeah. <laughs> it applies yeah. to you. It applies. Anyhow, I'm out of here. I'm being silly. It's Friday. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks, Pax. Uh, somebody somebody wants to customize. Uh, oh my goodness. Go ahead. Say go what you're gonna no, say. I was gonna friend. say I can't wait to do it again. And thank you so much for your platform and everything right. that you do for this community. Thank you from All the right. bottom of our hearts. You're a sweetheart. You're a sweetheart. All right. You stay safe. You and whatever too, you do, my keep keep throwing it down, okay? Keep okay, keep throwing it down. Too. I'll see you later. Bye everybody. Okay, we'll bye -bye. see you. Have a good weekend. Bye bye. You too.